into winter. Winter into spring. Spring into summer. Summer into fall. So rolls the changing year. And so we change. Motion so swift, we know not that we move. The changes in seasons have inspired a lot of poets. But scientifically speaking, do you know how the phenomenon of changes in the seasons can be explained? It's all connected to planetary motion. Ptolemy showed the world a geocentric solar system, which was centered on the Earth with the Moon, the Sun, and five planets revolving around the Earth in perfect circular orbits. Then came Nicholas Copernicus, who presented a heliocentric solar system. This model showed the Sun at the center of the solar system, with planets revolving around the Sun in circular orbits. However, neither of these models could explain the variations in seasons or the lengths of days over the year. Finally, Johannes Kepler, a German mathematician, astronomer and astrologer, in his laws of planetary motion, explained that planets revolve around the Sun in elliptical orbits, resulting in the change in distance from the Sun at various times of the year. Kepler's laws helped explain among other things, the reason for changing seasons on Earth. In this lesson, you will learn about Kepler's laws of planetary motion. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to list Kepler's laws of planetary motion, explain the law of orbits, explain the law of areas, and explain the law of periods. In the early 16th century, Kepler studied the shortcomings of Copernican model using the data gathered by his teacher, Tycho Brahe. Kepler concluded that all the planets revolve around the Sun in orbits, which were elongated rather than perfect circles. Based on his observations, Kepler propounded three laws of planetary motion, known as Kepler's laws. Kepler's three laws of planetary motion are the law of orbits, the law of areas, and the law of periods. Let's look at each law one by one. Kepler's first law the law of orbits states that the orbit of a planet is an ellipse with the sun at one of the foci. An ellipse is a closed, curved shape that is defined by two points called foci representing an elongated circle. The sum of the distance from a given point on the ellipse to the foci is always constant. In the given figure, A plus B is always constant. As you can see, in an elliptical orbit, the distance of the planets from the Sun is not constant. The closest point on a planet's orbit from the Sun is called perihelion. And the furthest point from the Sun is called the aphelion. When a planet like Earth is far from the Sun, the amount of heat reaching the Earth from the Sun is relatively less. Hence, we experience a cold season. Conversely, when Earth is nearer the Sun, we experience a hot season because more heat reaches the Earth. Kepler's second law of planetary motion, also known as the law of areas, states that 
the line joining the planet to the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal intervals of time as the planet travels in its orbit. Let's explain this through an example of Earth's movements. Suppose the Earth takes one month, that is 30 days to travel from point B to Q on its orbit. Imaginary lines drawn from the Sun to points B and Q. Together with the Earth's orbit, enclose a roughly triangular area. This area is equal to the area covered for any 30-day duration during the year, regardless of the Earth's position in its orbit. Thus, as shown, area A1 equals area A2. Further, according to Kepler, the speeds of planets in their orbits vary through the revolution around the Sun. When planets get closer to the Sun, they move faster. Conversely, as they get further from the Sun, they move with relatively lower speeds. Therefore, the speed of a planet is highest at perihelion and slowest at aphelion. Kepler's third law, the law of periods, defines the relationship between the orbital period of a planet and the average radius of its orbit. The orbital period of a planet, denoted by T, is the time taken by the planet to make a complete revolution around the Sun along its orbit. The average radius of the orbit of a planet is also the mean distance of the planet from the Sun. For example, suppose R1, R2 and so on are the distances of Earth from the Sun for n number of positions of Earth in its orbit. Then, the average radius of Earth's orbit can be calculated as shown. The law of periods states that the square of orbital period t of a planet is proportional to the cube of its mean distance r from the sun. Hence, you can express the law of periods as t square proportional to r cube, where t is the orbital period of the planet in Earth years, and r is the mean distance in astronomical units. Astronomical unit, AU, is the mean distance between the Earth and the Sun. Thus, an astronomical unit is approximately 93 million miles or 150 million kilometers. If we consider two planets, E and B, and compare their mean distances from the Sun and orbital periods, we get the relationship as TA square divided by TB square is equal to RA cube divided by RB cube, where TA is equal to orbital period of planet A. TB is equal to orbital period of planet B. RA is equal to mean distance of planet A from the Sun. And RB is equal to mean distance of planet B from the Sun. Scientists use Kepler's laws to determine the positions and the orbital periods of various planets in the solar system. These laws also help us in calculations involved in determining orbital periods of satellites natural as well as artificial. This brings us to the end of this lesson on Kepler's laws of planetary motion. In this lesson, you learned about Kepler's three laws of planetary motion. The section on solved problems provides you an opportunity to review some model problems based on these concepts. 
to revisit the key points covered in this lesson. Please review the flashcard at the end of this lesson.